guys, Disney Nuts here. How are you guys doing? Hope you're doing fine. I'm here to do a quick video of this pretty cool, awesome shot of Jingle Bell Bam exploding over the Swan and Dolphin Hotel as seen at the um, at the boardwalk. Okay, so I'm going. This is the final result here that we got on the screen. We got some nice big blasts, lots of dark, uh, dark colors on there, and and the reflections right here on the water. Really cool. Everything looks sharp. Everything looks awesome. Okay. For this, we're going to be using a technique that's called photo stacking or image stacking, however you want to call it. And the cool thing of this is that you can actually put different photos one on top of the other and create a really big massive, um, in this case, fireworks display as you can see in the screen right now. Okay, so we will need to use Photoshop for this. So you do need to have a licensed copy of it as well as Lightroom because we're going to um, edit the stuff after we take it into Photoshop and do our photo um, stacking. We're going to bring it back into Lightroom and edit it to make sure it looks nice and crisp and as we want it. Okay, so first is first. I'm going to show you the images that I took. And as you probably have seen in my previous videos, F11 is the base that I use for uh, for all my um, fireworks shot. And I usually work my way up from there. So if for any reason I see that there's a lot of blasts and stuff like that, I'll sometimes bring up the f-stop so that way the stuff won't come blown out. And um, as for the shutter speed on shooting fireworks, as I mentioned before, it's all a game. You got to go out there and test and depends what you see on the uh, fireworks uh, if you release the shutter before or you shoot or release it after. So again, um, I'm using three photos here, but for this event, I probably took like 25 photos and probably half of them look, they don't look that good. Okay. Again, I'm going to select three photos here. I'm going to stack them together. I'm going to make this awesome shot. Okay. So first thing is first, I'm going to go ahead and um, show you here the set, second photo that I took which is f11 this time 12 seconds and here's the first one this was, was 14 seconds and the last one that I took which was actually at f20 at 15 seconds and the reason that I use f20 on this was that I knew the show was coming to an end and usually at the end is when you get the massive most amazing fireworks which is where they throw all the stuff at the end and if I don't bring my f-stop up it's all gonna come out blown out it's gonna look white and it's gonna look terrible okay so that's why I use f20 on that one okay so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to bring all these three images into Photoshop. And the way that I'm going to do that, I'm going to bring it in as layers, which means I'm going to open up one Photoshop session with three images inside of it. So I'm going to go ahead and select the three. You can do that by either selecting the shift or hitting the control key and selecting the three of them. And I hit right click. I'm going to put edit and go all the way down to the bottom and set open layers in Photoshop. Okay, so we let Photoshop load and open up the photos. Again, I'm using three photos here, but you can use as many photos as you want. If you want to use five, six, seven, even two, it's whatever you want to do. And again, edit with your eyes. Um, you know, if you like it and if it's good, if you think it's good, it's good. Okay, so you don't have to worry about um, how many images you need to capture. And the cool thing of this is that you can actually mix and match different images. Like if you have a couple of fireworks that um, a couple of them are red, well then use all the red together. You know. In this case, I picked a couple of a couple of them that had different colors. I picked a red one and blue, like that one. And I picked one that has a little bit of white. And I picked another one that has um, like a final blast. Okay. Okay. So there we go. Now everything is loaded here into into Photoshop. You got three images right here. You can see the names. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure they are perfectly aligned. Um, as as a rule of thumb, you know that when we're shooting fireworks, we have a tripod. So um, everything is going to be perfectly centered and hopefully you won't be moving the camera around. But just in case, we're gonna go ahead and do what they call auto align here in Photoshop, which makes sure that all the images are aligned. Because once we start playing with the image stacking, if something is out of place, it's gonna look it's gonna look weird, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and select all three of them. And the same thing, I hit the control button on my Windows computer, and I select all three of them, and I'm gonna go up here to edit. And under here, there's an option called auto align layers. I'm gonna go ahead and select auto, and that's going to go ahead and tell Photoshop to go ahead and look at these uh, three images again. You need to make sure you have the three images selected or how many images you have in there because you want it to make sure it aligns all the images. Okay. And there we go. Okay. So the first thing that we see is that we have some white spaces here. And what um, uh, Photoshop is telling us that it didn't have any information to fill up here. And that usually happens if I take a photo like this and for some reason I move the camera and um, I moved it a little bit just to adjust because I saw the fireworks exploding a little high so I moved the camera up so then that's why it, the camera says oh but I can't I don't got the information to fill up this part which is why we have this information here but no big deal we make sure we have our three things selected we're going to hit the crop tool 
and we're just going to drag this in a little bit here and the same thing on the top just a tad same thing here since we got we got some lines up here we hit enter oh, we got some some more on the bottom as well i hit enter and there we go all lines are now gone okay so we don't have any spaces on the sides which is perfect and the next thing we're going to do here in photoshop is actually the blend mode and that is right here on top of all your layers you have a little drop down you have a bunch of them here um, for today we're going to go with one that's called lighten as simple as that I click lighten I gotta make sure I have all my layers selected okay and I'll click lighten and then we have um, all the fireworks exploding through and the images looks pretty clear on the bottom and everything so what it's doing is that it's actually putting the lighter part of each photo and showing that it's like the darker stuff it's not going to show and what's going to happen is it's going to blend through all the way into the bottom so it's going to show a uh, really nice bottom image here and we're going to have a really cool top image again on the top. Again, I selected lighten mode and what we do here is that we select all three images and we select the lighten mode. If I go to normal, I'll only see the top image. And the reason for that is that the blend mode will only say normal and if I got three images and it starts from the top to the bottom, it's only going to show the top one. But if I select lighten mode, it's going to automatically show the lightness part of each of the photos and there we go voila okay so there we got our image stacking here and we got a really cool blast here and again this you can play with what you want to show you know depending on how many images I'll sometimes put in five or six images in the play with uh, what looks the best if it doesn't look too much um, if I want some more red I want some more green blue whatever I just pick the fireworks that I shot okay so once that's done we're going to go ahead and close this or save it since I opened this up in Lightroom I just go ahead and hit the X and it'll automatically save it and it should re-import back into Lightroom let's go back here to Lightroom and here it is here's our photo it's been re-imported back into Lightroom as a TIFF format and now we, this is where we get to the fun part we do a little bit of editing editing okay and hit the develop button and I got all my tools here on the right and if you've seen my um, my editing uh, videos of the other one let me turn this off and you know get stuff out of the way here so it doesn't look confusing okay I'm gonna go ahead and start from the top to the bottom so basically um, okay here we have the images uh, with that's already merged into one image and I'm gonna go ahead and put a little temperature down here a little bit give a nice cool effect cooler effect okay the next thing is exposure I think the exposure is fine Highlights, I'm going to bring this down, which is really cool for fireworks. Okay. But you can see now the fireworks, you start seeing all the detail. Shadows, eh, I like to bring it up sometimes, but sometimes there's a dark shot like this. What will happen is that you'll get all the sky will come out, and if it's got noise, it's got noise, it doesn't look nice. Okay. Uh, whites, I usually leave, maybe a touch. Let's bring down the black here. Okay. There we go. And then let's go to the presence here. Just a little uh, touch of clarity to give a little detail there and a little vibrance and a little saturation so vibrance will actually pop up colors that are in the photo and saturation will bring up all the color range okay that's the difference there scrolling down a little bit more um, I could adjust the stuff if you want to I am NOT going to do it for this photo uh, but if you guys want to bring up the green you can bring up the green if you guys want to bring up the blue you'll make that swan pop a little bit more and make the fireworks a little bit more but this again all these settings are really up to you it's whatever you like to do is whatever you like to edit is the way to do it okay here we go down to the sharpening I usually like to sharpen a little bit I'll bring up the masking and masking what it does is that it'll actually do what the um, it'll, it'll mask whatever's uh, in this case black but I usually put around here I'll, I'll explain the masking maybe in another video because it's a little a little complicated set. okay so here noise reduction just tad just a tad usually my rule of thumb that if I have here uh, 50 or 60 I'll bring this usually to half or something a little less and there we go okay so next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use the adjustment brushes which is this part which I've done also in my other video and the adjustment brush allows me to do certain settings and certain tweaks to the photo without having it to do it to the whole photo like for example I want to darken this sky here because it looks a little you know, like you can see the smoke, um, you know, blasting over here. So I'm going to go ahead and select my adjustment tool. And I am going to select the uh, the exposure. I'm going to bring it down. I can actually come here into the uh, 
the presets and I'll have already like a preset here and um, another thing I want to do on this part here is where you have the brush sizes here you have the brush size and you have the flow which is how hard it's going to uh, affect the change I'll just put it here probably like in 30 brush size this is fine and I'll make sure the auto mask is off because I don't want to I don't want it to try to guess where I, I'm going to try to um, to hide again it's this is my preference this is how I like to do it, but you can go ahead and turn on the auto mask if you want I'm going to go ahead and start uh, hiding this and you can see how it start getting darker another tip that I like to tell people is that you can start with a a really high flow and do the outsides and then as you start getting in you bring the flow down and that way it doesn't affect that much and I'm going to do the same thing on this side okay there we go so now it looks a little darker okay the next thing I like to do a lot with fireworks is actually put a bunch of saturation in the fireworks themselves and the reason that I do that, I will actually bring out the colors that are in there, and I'll show you an example. I'm going to hit new, and I'm going to hit another uh, effect here. I'm going to saturation, and saturation is 84, and I'm going to go paint right over here in my fireworks. And you're going to see how that cyan is starting to come out, and the purple. Okay, look at that. And that's what gives it that really cool. There you go. Okay, again, that was done with the saturation. Okay, another cool thing is that obviously, as you know, the fireworks are going off and you got the really cool um, glossy uh, uh, lake right here. So we want to do what I like to use, which is the clarity over the water. It gives it a really cool effect. So I'm going to select another adjustment layer and this time I'm going to select clarity. And I'm going to go right over the water. And you may not see it, but it is doing like a nice glossy effect to it and let's go ahead and bring it up a little more just to see exactly what it's doing okay there we go so now that water looks pretty cool looks pretty glossy fireworks are going off one last thing that I'm going to do to this which is the sm uh, a small little tweak that I like to use on on stuff like this when you're dealing with reflections we got here the reflections of the fireworks going off on the water but let's say you want to add a little bit more you want to make it you know like really show a really good um a sh uh, reflections on the water and the way that i'm going to do that i'm actually going to paint over it again but i'm going to use my temperature tool and what the temperature tool does is that it actually makes stuff look cool and when i mean cool it makes it shoot to the blue side so um, when i paint over this it's going to look like if the fireworks are actually um, reflecting off of the water Okay, so let's go ahead and paint over here so you can see what I mean. Okay, you see as it's turning more blue. So now, it looks like the fireworks are going off and you got the reflection going off the water. Isn't that cool? That's a free tip right there. Again, I used the temperature and I brought it down. Okay. And there we go. And that is your image. And there we go if you want to do another thing that I see here that we can do is I'm going to go ahead and select the adjustment brush one more time and I'm going to select exposure and I'm going to actually bring it up because I want I see that the dance hall day and all this stuff looks a little dark okay, let's go ahead and make the brush a little smaller I'm just going to do a quick pass over here and there you go a little bit over here a little bit over there that way these buildings look a little uh, brighter than what the other ones are okay and done voila okay there we got our photo uh image of jingle bell bam shot over um the swan hotel as seen from the boardwalk this was actually uh we were standing pretty much across from the beach hotel which is a really cool spot to see all this stuff going on and uh there you go guys that's how simple it is as you saw i didn't spend too much time on this i didn't spend hours um but you do have to get good uh, fireworks shots that's key here and um so make sure that you get a really cool clean crisp fireworks shot you know that's the key to everything and pixie approves he's actually up there sleeping and um that's it that's the video for today it probably took us 10 minutes that's how much time i spend on this thing again if you got any questions or comments Feel free to comment underneath the video and hopefully you like it. Hopefully you can use this to your photos. And again, um, have fun taking photos like I tell everybody. Make sure you go out there and take the shot regardless of the equipment that you have. It could be an iPhone. It could be a, 
blackberry a point and shoot get out there have fun and in the meantime take care guys thanks for following